going above and beyond to impress customers is sometimes easier said than done. And I know that we all think we're performing really well at keeping customers satisfied. Now I often tell myself, well hey, if my phone's ringing then I must be doing something, right? While that might be the case, I know that there's always room for improvement. The majority of customer complaints and negative reviews are typically centered around customer service, not so much the product. So how you perform in this department can really determine whether you fail or succeed. So I'm going to give you a few tips to help promote better customer service in your painting business. But before that, I want to give you a quick story time about the time that I had a bad customer experience. Now, I love to buy local. I'm from a small town and I really pride myself on spending my money within the community. And quite a few years back, I needed tires on my trucks. So I went to the local shop to get tires and I'll be the one to tell you that the tires were great. The lug nuts were tightened properly. The tires had the correct air pressure and the price was comparable to the big tire chain across town. But when I first walked in and originally inquired about the service, they acted if I was like bothering them. I asked very few questions because I felt like the guy didn't even want my business. It just seemed like he was irritated that I even considered going in there and spending money on some new tires. But I wanted to spin local, so I just chalked it up to a random interaction and thought like, hey, maybe this guy's just having a rough day. I've been there and I agreed to move forward. So then, later in the day when it was time to pay, one of the techs tried to upsell me on a new front end for my old truck. And I'll be honest, it definitely needed it but I politely explained that hey this is my old truck I'm gonna retire it to it's gonna be like a farm yard truck and it probably won't even go faster than 20 miles an hour in the future so I don't really want to spend the money on this truck you know and the money that was being asked to spend was more than I paid for the Dagon truck so the tire technician started treating me poorly started flailing his arms acting like oh you wasted my time and I'm just like man I spent three thousand dollars today and I can't believe like you're treating me this way so basically the moral of the story is nowadays I go to the big chain across town purely because of the bad customer service and the experience that I had. It left me with like a weird type of feeling and it wasn't a good one. So let's get into the tips of today. Number one is you want to set high standards for your company. Now, if you want your company to be remembered for excellent customer service, you need to ensure that you're doing more than just the bare minimum. For me, I like to always dress professionally and I keep my workspace tidy and organized. I always behave politely on the job site, like I try not to curse and I, I don't play loud music. Also, I'm always kind and courteous whenever I have to speak with a customer or a potential customer. And I've noticed lately working in the home improvement industry that these principles aren't really intuitive. Other painters are more concerned with getting the job done as fast as possible rather than being well-mannered and organized. And really a little goes a long way and making customer service a top priority, you're going to create client trust and loyalty and you're going to gain a great reputation. Number two on my list is to learn how to read your clients. Now, there isn't really like an instruction manual on being effective in client communications. Now, yeah, there are guidelines, right? Now, there's guidelines on when and how you should approach these customer interactions, but there's not like a one size fits all because no two customers are alike. So by understanding your customer's personality as well as their expectations as a customer, you're going to be able to achieve a great relationship and build a lifelong client. So a couple examples of this is like, think to yourself, does my client like a lot of updates? And or like, what is their preferred method of communication? Do they like calls or would they rather take texts? Do they like having consults at the beginning and the end of the day or do they just want the job done and the bill sent? So get to know your customer, learn which questions to ask in order to show that you're considerate of their needs. Like, hey, do you mind if we play music during the job? Um, or do you mind if we sit under this tree and have lunch? Would you prefer us to bring a porta potty or is it, can we use the restroom here? It's really simple, but it's not intuitive. Next on the list is try to identify and address problems as soon as possible. Now, even if you are like the best at what you do, it's impossible to make everybody happy all the time. Every business does get its fair share of bad reviews and complaints, and whether they're true or false, I like to approach the complaints immediately. So even if I can't win over one dissatisfied reviewer, I may be able to convey the fact that I do value customer service to any of my future clients. So for instance, you know, every now and then I'll find myself in a review section of a different business and I'll read the reviews and I understand that some people just can't be satisfied, but when I do see that a business immediately responded and tried to make an effort to correct the situation, I always think, you know, that's pretty impressive. And however you choose to handle this is really based on your individual situation, but a common way to deal with these types of situation is obviously compensation like discounts or free add-on service. Some customers can't be salvaged, but you can do everything in your power to set yourself a 
apart from the competition by focusing on just a few of the things in this video. Customer service really does go a long way in our type of work. So to wrap up the video, I got one more and it's pretty simple, but again, you know, all these things aren't intuitive, so I just want to get it out there. You know, it's showing gratitude. Sending out thank you cards used to be commonplace, but, but since the acceptance of emails in society, I feel like the simple and yet highly effective pieces of snail mail can really win you a lifelong customer. I've recently started mailing out thank you notes to my clients and it's kind of cool because it takes a bit of time to get there and showing gratitude is just nice. So if you have any other tips that would really help elevate customer service, don't forget to mention them in the comment section and hit the like button if you're still here, subscribe if you want, and remember, anything's possible and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.